<laughs> yes, we are approaching the time when the full moon eclipses the sun and the world falls under complete and total darkness as the rivers run red with the blood of the dam. Soon, soon, my minions, our night of mischief will be upon us, and we will once again wreak havoc upon the incessant beings who pollute the mortal realm. Soon, the reckoning will begin. But first, I must check my mail! Bill, Bill, Bill. Ooh, 10 cents off laundry detergent. Bill, Bill. What's this? No, it cannot be. It cannot be! Jury summons! Damn you, King County Judicial System! How dare you garner the nerve and tenacity to be so presumptuous as to force the devil himself to perform his civic duty! The reckoning must come forth! The blood must fall like rain in an orgy of violence under the full red moon of all Hallow's Eve! Oh, I can just defer it until Christmas. <laughs> Now that's wrapped up, it's time for our segment, playing the fucking blues! And we're going to play on Chip Roberts' old rig too, because now that I have his soul, I'm taking his rig too! Oh! Fuck! What? Mortal? You're back? Why the hell are you walking among the land of the living once again? Uh, why else, man? It's Halloween. Amateur night, as my contemporaries call it. The kids are dressed up, they're getting their sweets. I am gonna give myself a little bit of sugar, all right? I spent two months buried six feet under, and I got two months of pent up sperms I need to deposit. <laughs> Eve, if you were a chick, which of these jackets would make you want to mount me? The leather one. <laughs> Oh no, I don't think so, mortal. Don't think you're going to escape the wrath of hell that easily. <laughs> this? Oh no! Oh no! Gargoyles Quest 2, The Demon Darkness. Ah! Looks like Satan's trying to put a damper on my Halloween. Who does that clown think he is? The devil? I may wear an inverted cross and pentagram necklace, but that doesn't mean I want to hang out with the guy. It's just, uh, cultural appropriation. Yeah, thank you liberal arts education. That's it? You show up after quitting YouTube and immediately go off about cultural appropriation? What kind of publicity stunt is that? A lazy one! Gargoyles Quest was a pretty solid game for the Game Boy, and rather groundbreaking for the time, as it was the first game to depict a sacrificial offering made to the devil! Gargoyles Quest 2, The Demon Darkness, picks up right where the first one left off, but I'm not really sure where that is since I couldn't finish the game and had to wind up exercising it. Chip, have you ever actually beat a game before? I beat my meat- Oh! What's that? It's a prequel? What the hell did I come back from the dead for if I can't even get my back straight? But none of that matters because this one is a prequel and Firebrand has red skin with blue wings like the Key Hunters and Ridley's lair from Super Metroid. I'm a Gargoyles Quest vet, so we're gonna go ahead and start this motherfucker. A long, long time ago. In a galaxy far, far away. Before human being there lived a monster named Firebrand. Holla at you, boy! In a town of the Ghoul Girl, Etruria. Become a true warrior, Firebrand trained himself in the warrior's training center every day, but one day. Yeah, this hot pink is really evoking that spooky atmosphere I'm looking for in this Halloween special. Firebrand, won't you give up becoming a warrior? Don't waste your time. Give up. Once people leave this town, they never come back. Oh yeah, I can't imagine why. Could I have anything to do with this asshole over here shitting all over everybody's goals? There is a warrior's training center in this town. Yeah, I know, I train there every day. What, didn't you read the opening? All right, first level, let's party. Whoa, them graphics. You got your typical spooky affair of trees with vomiting faces, gothic architecture, skulls in the background, and uh, skeleton ostrich. Yep, it starts. If this game is anything like its predecessor, we're in for a real romp with the enemies, including, but not limited to, anthropomorphic satanic pizza dough, the painting of the lava level from Super Mario 64, 
whatever the hell this is supposed to be. Okay, these ghouls are real assholes. You have to trigger them to appear, and they're invincible for a second while they materialize. The problem is Firebrand is so slow on the ground that by the time you turn heel to move the other direction, they pop out and damage you. What, Firebrand runs around like he has his ass on fire in town, but in the levels, he's strolling about like he ain't got nothing better to do. Ah, fuck, game over. Oh no. It's all happening again. It's Rob Troy Halloween Special 2017 all over again! Only I'm playing an NES game and not a Game Boy game and it's 2018 and I'm wearing a different outfit. Fall down and get killed by a goddamn reanimated skeleton ostrich. Dead. 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 This is the first fucking level! If this is indicative of what's to come, then I'd be surprised that they even bothered programming any additional levels. To assume that anybody would get that far is a bit presumptuous, don't you think? The skeleton ostrich spits its own head at you, then charges you faster than you can say fuck! What's the boss of this level? Is Firebrand gonna have to bounce on a goddamn single pixel platform while laser beams shoot out the wall or some shit? Oh no, of course. It's a giant flying heavy metal goat-headed snake with a fireball spitting face where its chest should be. This is the first level. Yeah! Take that! Yeah! First level's beat! Now on to the town of Gibeah. Jibia. Interestingly enough, despite the overworld, the game lacks the random encounters found in its predecessor, probably because they upped the difficulty 20-fold in your everyday levels. They kept these bullshit lava crossing levels though, which makes backtracking nothing short of a nuisance. Like this part, I'm supposed to jump on top of these little floating platform guys that shoot fireballs, and the pattern is so erratic that instead of waiting for them to get to a certain point that makes logical sense and then jumping on them, they turn around and change direction like 75% of the way down from where you normally expect it. Did any of that make any sense? No? Fuck it! Oh what, it's not enough that the platforms move and then switch directions three quarters of the way at what should be considered a normal rotation, but they have to shoot fireballs too? I just want to get to the next stage, yet every time I die and continue, I have to go back through this stupid shit. And finally, we're in the land of Jibia. Let's see what weird shit the denizens have to say here. Look at my ugly face. Oh my god, it's hideous! Like, this is some bullshit here. I'm supposed to grip onto these ledges and platform up, right? The thing about it is that I have three or four different things flying at me at the same time. You got this asshole over here shooting fireballs while moving, and I'm supposed to jump on top of him, and then you got the eyeball guy who pops up out of nowhere and gets in your way. Meanwhile, you got those things that shoot stuff at you in an arc, so that's three or four different things that are coming at you, and in the meantime, you have spikes on the bottom of the screen that also hurt you. So you can either try to float and take them out, you can just hit the spikes and use that momentary invincibility to your advantage or I don't know fucking turn the game off and do something else I don't know bearing in mind now that this is the second fucking level there's no way it should be so difficult at this point I barely gotten used to the mechanics of the game all around oh and they made these jumps just the right amount of length so that your wingspan just barely runs out of juice before you're able to cling on and they know it too yeah you see Capcom they hate gamers they always have they're always throwing this type of shit on you and every time you die you have to go back to the password hut cross the fucking fire bridge again and then go through this Goddamn gauntlet of a level where you get nine million different varieties of crap flying at you. <clears throat> Fuck, I can't even get past the second goddamn level. It's no wonder this game's considered a hidden gem, because nobody could ever beat it, so how could anybody ever know about it? Shit, man. You know something? This game should stay hidden, so that nobody should have to be subject to the fucking torture that I've had to go through tonight. That's what you get for cutting me out of your Christmas special last year, mortal. Your ass is mine. Come on, man. It's Halloween. I should be out. Pouring it up, getting late, causing ruckus, breaking shit. Instead, I'm stuck in my goddamn apartment playing a fucking NES game. Every damn Halloween is the same damn thing. What did I ever do wrong? Womanize, cheat, defraud, expose yourself to minors. They can't prove that. So now that I've gotten used to the game's bullshit, the Firebridge stages aren't giving me that much grief. I'm back on level two and I finally got past the first part, but get this, there's an entire second portion to the level which is somehow even harder. You make your way under the stage, have to jump at a very particular height so you don't hit the spikes on the ceiling but still get enough air time to latch onto the very small platform. Yeah, good luck with that. Then the game introduces this out of blue wind mechanic. Is there any animation or graphic to indicate that the wind is there? Nope. That means that when it's gone, you just have to know or fall to your death. So you got these fucking horseshit spikes coming out of the walls, you gotta weave and fly in between them, and then you go up top where there are spikes coming out of the floor while these jerk-offs fly by to bomb you, and then you got these skeleton heads coming out of the eggs shooting green globs at you, then after all that, go down a hole with spikes coming out of it, plant your ass between two sets of spikes shooting up blocking your path, go in the boss room and fight the boss which is a mutated green head of cauliflower that shoots bubbles. Bubbles kill Firebrand.
When Chip Roberts failed to complete the game, he released all of his power, the Seattle East Side was enveloped in flames, and the black light was swept away, together with the power of Judas Priest's music. Thus, the Seattle East Side returned to its peaceful state, and Chip fulfilled his destiny and dream of banging hot milfs on Halloween night.